Welcome back everybody. Thank you for visiting the YouTube channel for bestbiblecommentaries.com. In this video, I'm going to talk about three mid-level exegetical conservative commentaries on the book of Philippians. I'm also at the end of the video going to show you three brand new releases in Bible commentaries. Before I do those things, I invite you to subscribe to my channel if you like seeing videos like this. Also clicking the thumbs up button on YouTube really helps my uh, helps my efforts on YouTube, so I'd appreciate that. And uh, as always, feel free to ask a question or leave a comment down below. So I got a viewer request recently to talk about this Philippians volume in the Evangelical Exegetical Commentary series. And I also noticed that people like it when I do a little bit of comparison with other with other commentaries and videos. And so I'm going to show you two Philippians commentaries that that um, are are I think comparable to this uh, this volume by Mark Keown. So the Evangelical Exegetical Commentary series is still relatively young. Volumes are still coming out, and I think it's one of the most um, up-and-coming commentary series, I guess you could say. And this Mark Keown is very well-reviewed. It was one of the first ones to come out in the series, if I remember correctly. And it's actually in two volumes. As you can see here, I'm just showing you the first volume. This is chapter 1-1 to 2-18. And uh, I, th I, have to, I have to think that this might... this is probably the the longest um, Philippians commentary ever written. Um, I definitely don't know of another mid-level that is the the so both volumes together it's one thousand one hundred and two pages in length. I definitely don't know of another mid-level commentary on Philippians is that big, and I and I've never come across a technical one either. So, but uh, so I don't know. Maybe there's one out there. But nevertheless, there's a very long in-depth commentary on the book of Philippians, but it's mid-level. So it's accessible to pastors and professors, and probably some lay readers would enjoy it as well. So just to, let me just give you a little bit of perspective um, on the length of this commentary. So last month I did a video on Craig Keener's four-volume Acts commentaries, which is 4,500 pages in length. And there's about a five, I can't quite remember, it's 500 or 600 page uh, introduction to that Acts commentary. And so, so about 4,000 pages is just strict commentary. So that means Acts is 28 chapters long. And so Keener devotes roughly 142 pages per chapter of the book of Acts in, in that uh, four volume commentary. Philippians, as you know, is only four chapters long, and this commentary is 1,102 pages. There's about a 100-page introduction in this first volume, which means there's about 1,000 pages of commentary itself, which means that Kion, on average, devotes 250 pages uh, per chapter on the book of Philippians. So just incredible. If you really want to do a deep dive into Philippians, this is going to be an outstanding choice for you. So Mark Keown is a professor at Laidlaw in New Zealand. He is Presbyterian. The review I have to share with you on this one is from the Bulletin of Biblical Research. The reviewer is, is Janine Brown. When I think that my my viewers will, will know a commentary author or a reviewer because they've written other commentaries, I try and mention that. So Janine Brown has written a few very well-reviewed commentaries. She's the reviewer of, of this one in this uh, academic journal. And she notes that the commentary is carefully researched with comprehensive analysis. She says, Keown holds a traditional view on the integrity of the letter, its origin in Rome, and the Christological nature of the hymn in chapter two. So most of us are probably familiar with the, that, that uh, famous, beautiful hymn in Philippians chapter two. There are some moderate um, slash liberal uh, commentators who do not see uh, the Christology in the hymn or question it, I should, I guess you could say. Um, but, but Keown commits to it and defends the Christological nature of that particular hymn. Janine Brown also notes that Keown sees the situation between Iota and Syntyche in uh, the beginning of Philippians 4, like Philippians 4, 1 through 3, somewhere. I think that's where it is. Um, so that situation between those two women, he sees that as a purpose, as a primary purpose for Paul writing the letter. So that's one of the ways that this Philippians volume uh, stands out because Keon makes that argument, whereas others like Hawthorne and Silva, they don't make that argument. So now if you end up disagreeing with Keon on that particular point, is this commentary still worthwhile? Absolutely. It's just one of the unique positions that, that he takes. So um, as far as a criticism goes, Brown notes that there's sometimes she thought that there's too much um, 
lexicon information in the commentary. So sometimes Kion will take s- several pages to provide what's r- really the kind of information that you would find in a lexicon or a, or a dictionary, like a Greek dictionary. And she thought that maybe that would better stay. It'd be better if that information just stayed in the lexicon. Um, but, um, you know, if that's the only criticism, then I think this is safe to say this is a very well-reviewed commentary. Just one side note, since I did a video on Preto O'Brien last week, I did correspond with Mark Keown, uh on this commentary a few years ago. And one of the questions I asked him um, about Philippians is what were his go-to commentaries? And when I asked him that question, Peter O'Brien's Philippians commentary had already been pulled at that point. And the news that I talked, that I the news about all of that um, was already out. And interestingly enough, he he recommended consulting uh, Peter O'Brien's commentary on Philippians um, for for per, per, uh, personal study and for, for ministerial purposes. Um, I just thought that was interesting to note because several of us got into a discussion on that in the comments section in last week's video. All right, so let's talk about Hawthorne now. Um, a lot of people who are familiar with commentaries are have probably have a volume in the WBC series just because it's been around so long and it's easy to find affordable used copies. This Hawthorne volume was published in 1993. It was revised in 2004. It's 305 pages in length. Uh, Hawthorne was a professor at uh, Wheaton. The review I have is from the Journal for, of the Evangelical Theological Society. If you're new to my channel, I like to share academic reviews because I think they're the most helpful and because not many people have access to those. So this is from the Journal of the Evangelical Theological Society, called JETS for short, and the reviewer is Philip Towner. So it's another commentator that some of you might be familiar with. So one of the things that Towner notes about this volume is that Hawthorne leads more technical. I'd call the WBC series on the whole mid-level, but because of how this how the sections are laid out and how the the, the template that each author uses, um, an, an author can certainly take the discussion more technical, and that's what Hawthorne does. So if there's if there's three parts to the spectrum, introduction, mid-level, and technical, this is on the mid mid-level end of the spec or middle of the spectrum, but it leans more toward technical and definitely not toward more introductory. So if you're not familiar with Greek, I think you'll be able to use a lot of this commentary. If you are familiar with Greek or can at least follow the discussion on um, on matters concerning the Greek, then, then you will be the one to maximize this particular volume. So Towner sums up in the JETS um, review, He says Hawthorne is insightful, this commentary is insightful, steady, and thorough. The expositor will find his careful explication of Paul's thought a valuable aid. Now, let's look at Moises Silva in the BECNT series, the Baker Exegetical Commentary in the New Testament series. This commentary volume is 458 pages, or, in other words, he... He discusses Philippians in the same amount of space as Keon discusses one chapter of Philippians. So it doesn't make it a negative review for this volume. It just shows you the depth that um, that Keon goes into. So uh, Silva was a professor at Westminster Theological Seminary, Gordon Conwell, and I think a few other places as well. The um, academic review I have to share with you is from Trinity Journal. And the reviewer says that Sil- Silva's commentary is concise, readable, and well-researched. And he notes that it's a commentary on the Greek text. So again, same with Hawthorne. Um, those who, will, who, who are familiar with Greek, can follow discussion in Greek, are going to be the ones to maximize this volume. He notes that, the reviewer notes that Silva is conservative and takes a traditional view on the integrity of the letter. And the commentary strengths are Silva's strengths, which are linguistics and textual criticism from a conservative perspective. So the summary in Trinity Journal is the reviewer says that this volume, he says it's not groundbreaking, but it's valuable reading. And he notes especially that he thinks pastors will benefit from it. So because I talked about three different volumes that um, that uh, discuss the Greek in depth, um, what if you're looking for a Philippians volume and you're not as familiar with the Greek or would just like something else? So I, I'm not, I don't have these commentaries with me here today, but I'm just going to recommend two for you to look into. Um, F.F. Bruce's Philippians commentary in the NICNT series, the New International Commentary on the New Testament series. Um, you'll probably find that one helpful. 
Also, Frank Thielman in Philippian volume in the NIV application commentary series, uh, also very well reviewed and, and not a lot of Greek, based on the Greek, of course, but not a lot of Greek in the explanation of the text. Okay, let me show you three brand new releases that I have. The first one is from Erdman's, and it's Bruce Waltke and Ivan Da Silva, and it's called Proverbs, a Shorter Commentary. So I did not know until I was reading the preface of this uh, commentary a few days ago that this is an, basically an abridged version of Waltke's two-volume Proverbs commentary in the new um, International Commentary on the Old Testament series, the NICOT series. So very well-reviewed two-volume commentary in hardback. So if you got both of those new, I think it, you might be paying... $70, $80. But this, I imagine this one will be 25 or 30. I think it's for sale. Um, I received this before it went on sale, but I think this one is for sale now. And I would guess it's 25 to $30. So again, this is just an abridged, bridged version, a more affordable option um, to that two volume one in the NICOT series. And I was thinking, wouldn't that be interesting if uh, Erdman started putting out these shorter commentaries on the two volume hardbacks in that series? Because they're just expensive, but some of them are very well reviewed, like Genesis is two volumes, um, Ezekiel is two volumes. There's probably some others that I'm not thinking of off the top of my head, but um, people would really benefit from these abridged paperbacks and, and um, because they're more affordable, yet still give you the meat of the explanations. All right, the next one I have to show you is the Ezra and Nehemiah volume in the NIV application commentary series. So what's especially noteworthy about this is this volume completes the NIV application commentary series, which, if I remember correctly, started in the early 1990s. And I think this might be the most popular commentary series today. Pastors just love it, but other others use it too. Sunday school teachers, small group leaders, because it has a focus of making the text relevant to today. So a lot of people in the church um, really like this series. So um, the last few years, we've been waiting on a few volumes for this set to be complete, the second volume of Psalms. Um, and that came out a few years ago, and then we were just waiting on this Ezra and Nehemiah, and now it's out. I think the commentary series is um, still going to receive a lot of attention from Zondervan. I, I note that there, I noticed that there's already second editions of different volumes in this series coming out. I think that will continue. It's just a it's a huge brand and very popular, so I don't think um, this series is going away anytime soon. The third new release I have to show you is the Mark volume in the SGBC series. So if you have not used this series before, I would say if you like this NIV application commentary series, you're probably going to like this one too. Um, it's uh, it's mid-level and I would say it leans a little bit more toward introductory. Um, yeah, a little bit more toward introductory. And what the, the title refers to um, the SBG, SGBC series explains and illuminates each passage of scripture in light of the Bible's grand story. So um, that's just a very helpful to approach to teaching scripture in church. And also similar to this volume, how making the text relevant to today um, is very helpful approach to teaching and preaching in a church. So um so I think if if people like this series, they will like this series. And this is also, this is gaining in uh, popularity, I've noticed, especially among pastors are really liking this series, which is still relatively new. All right. Well, thank you for watching this video. I hope it's been helpful. Please feel free to leave comments and ask questions down below, and I will see you next time.